I'm a hardworking 30 something year old. I need to go and relax with my friends at a getaway. So we decide to go to a very nice place. We found it on Airbnb. And you know what? We're going to enjoy ourselves for the weekend. We deserve it. What I was not expecting was the most hellacious weekend I could ever imagine, which started off with possibly the Karen of the year. I need some advice on the ongoing situation with a problematic rental property. Uh, it's an owner, and it's during a recent vacation. It started as a fun weekend with friends, but quickly turned into a nightmare. So, two years ago, my friends and I, led by Alex, rented a condo in a bustling coastal town for a long weekend away. <laughs> right? We were a mixed group of four guys and three girls, all in our late 20s, working professionals, just needing an escape from our city life. So... We found a decent deal on a two-bedroom condo rental that advertised a luxury amenity, so I figured it would be the perfect relaxing getaway. After driving into town, we pulled up to the condo complex address, ready for vacation mode, only to find the place looks run down. It did not uh, match the photos online. The building had old faded paint, rusty stains, and visible cracks in the facade. The luxury pool was the size of a hot tub in cloudy green. We started having a bad feeling about it, but did not have any backup options, so decided to check in since we prepaid. The unit itself was a decent one on the inside, but still showing its age with outdated decor and a faint mildew smell. Well, as we settled in, I started noticing more issues. The stairway railings were loose, some steps on the fire escape were rotting through, exposed wire was sticking out into the hallway, you name it. Being a former code inspector, I could spot numerous violations that made me worry for our safety. Had I known, we definitely would have chosen another rental. Okay, just as the thought crossed my mind, we heard aggressive knocking at the door. This 50-something-year-old woman with a wine glass in her hand starts yelling at us about parking as soon as I open the door. So I look at her and literally say, um, do you need something? Confused, obviously, by the sudden confrontation. Uh, you can't park there. That spot is for unloading only. Move your vehicle now or I will have it towed. She pointed at my friend's SUV parked in the nearest spot and her slurred speech and disheveled appearance made us exchange these puzzled glances about who this angry stranger could actually be. <laughs> Sorry, but how long do we have before it needs to be moved, ma'am? We just finished unpacking, you know. Well, I tried to ask politely while she kept shouting about the rules are the rules. I'm the president of the Condominium Association, so you better listen to me. No parking means move it now. Well, I quickly realized this must be our upstairs neighbor, Karen, who managed the property. Not wanting any more drama, we agreed to shuffle cars so hers was no longer in the unloading zone. Mysterious pickup truck shows. Yeah, well, as we were walking back inside, a black pickup truck with tinted windows slowly entered the parking lot. Karen rushed over to speak to the driver who never got out or rolled down the window. I don't know, to me this just seemed oddly suspicious, but we brushed it off. Changed into swimsuits and left for dinner reservations along the waterfront. Some drinks and fresh seafood improved our moods after the earlier heated encounter. By the time we headed back, the condo was quiet for the night. The next morning, loud music blasted from the unit next door. They were already drinking beers and grilling food at 8 in the morning. We headed out to explore the surrounding beach town for most of the morning. Well, by early afternoon, my friend Chelsea wanted to take some pictures of the Oceanside Sunset, so we came back to the condo briefly. That's when I spotted the same black truck cruising through again. The same vehicle as yesterday creeping around the tinted windows. It was not too coincidental given the lack of traffic in a small complex. After a fancy dinner downtown, we returned at around uh, 10 p.m. to find a full-blown party happening throughout the property. People were everywhere. I'm talking broken bottles, spilled drinks strewn about, loud bass pulsing through the unit next door. 
pretty sure the pickup truck was parked amongst it, and we cautiously made our way through the crowd to get to our unit, when some girl drunkenly cursed us out for no reason, it suddenly dawned on us what was going on here. Guys, take pictures and videos in case that Karen lady tries to accuse us of this madness. So, we documented proof that we had just returned and retreated into our unit while chaos continued outside. We figured we would lay low and just check out early. Not even ten minutes later, the front door just burst open. A disoriented older guy I did not recognize literally storms in and guys, he's screaming, What the hell are you kids doing? You destroyed my property. What? An equally furious Karen followed him inside, screaming about the ruckus keeping her awake. Update number one. Well, obviously, shock and frustration washed over me. My friends froze in disbelief that these two just barged into our rental place. Hey, uh, you can't just come in here. We're paying customers. I confronted the guy who I assumed owned the units and, well... Oh, they're customers, all right. Destroying common property and disturbing the peace. Karen yelled out while slurring, swaying in the doorway. Ugh, the hallways are trashed. It, it's keeping my other renters awake. I want you guys out right now. Oh. We tried explaining it was the neighborhood party that wasn't us. It was next door. And even showed our time-stamped video as proof. But both Karen and the owner refused to even review it, demanding we, quote, pack up and get the heck out of here. Calling the police. Well, we felt threatened by their irrational hostility, and I discreetly called emergency services while my friend James kept them occupied. Within minutes, flashing blue and red lights flooded the courtyard. Uh, spotting the cavalry arriving, the owner's aggression vanished instantly. Wait, wait, uh, uh... We, we don't have to get the cops involved, guys. He he tried to plead while shooting Karen a panicked, What did you do here, Glare? Two patrol vehicles entered the lot to address the chaotic scene. So we flagged them over to summarize our situation being accused falsely because of the ruckus party next door. That was now in full swing again. So officers swiftly took action to shut down the reckless bash, still raging, they took our statement and reviewed the videos which supported our evidence. Intoxicated Karen kept shrieking nonsense to the cops from her balcony, claiming that we started it all. At this point, the authorities were fed up dealing with her as well. Exhausted and frustrated by the dramatic turn of events, my group unanimously agreed to pack up our crap and find another place to stay until our checkout date. Then, sort restitution with the booking provider later. The property manager himself was breaking into our unit. I mean, come on, that's the last straw. When we told the owner we were leaving and wanted a full refund for the remaining night, he became angry again, trying to convince us to stay. He realized his costly mistake of accusing his guest without cause for any type of proof at all. Well, however, I showed him the rental agreement explicitly prohibiting entering occupied premises without tenant permission. His breach of contract voided our housing obligation, and begrudgingly he handed over the keys so we could vacate peacefully. By midnight, our cars were loaded up, hazardously with luggage. The scene remained chaotic, with officers clearing out the courtyard trash and handling the barrage of noise complaints. So, we drove to the nearest available motel and crashed for whatever hours were left in the night. Update number two. We woke up in our cramped but cozy motel room, exhausted from the previous night's dramatic events. The adrenaline surge was wearing off, being replaced by anger over how we were treated by the Karen, the negligent owner, and the uh, partiers alike. This was supposed to be a fun, relaxing getaway from work. As we recounted the details over hot coffee and vending machine muffins, I started contemplating how I could seek justice for the outright fraud and mistreatment we had endured from the condo rental. Having previously worked for the town's code enforcement office, I understood exactly how to file building safety complaints that would trigger these investigations. I knew the place barely met livability standards from my expert eye. Bingo! I decided then I would submit a formal grievance to the city as retaliation. 
vivid memories of my old workplace. It came flooding back to me at that exact moment. I remembered the mold-covered basement units many transients and lower-income families reluctantly called home because rent outpaced wages in the tourist zone. Well, the countless violations I documented daily. Faulty wiring, eroding walls, fire hazards that my superiors did little about because vacation properties kept local politics afloat. Well, I'd quit in frustration when leadership dismissed my case for condemning a dilapidated building housing 20 families as unethical. Everything surfaced. Again, the same feeling of powerlessness. I mean, well, not this time. I knew. I just knew. The convoluted system and how to strategically maneuver it to bring the consequences down. I felt unexpectedly motivated and almost excited to take action. So, I'm going to gather evidence. Over stale pastries and weak coffee, I start compiling all documented proof, collecting photos showing the staircase deterioration, building cracks, exterior interiors, pool disrepair, plus video footage of all Karen's drunken outburst. Guys, I cataloged it chronologically making sure her position of the Condominium Association Board was also captured. Once I had it organized completely, step two was looking up private owner information, which the town clerk had on record of notification purposes, of course. Consulting legal advice, right? Although a fairly straightforward, I still wanted to ensure pursuing formal complaints against both private rental properties and HOAs fell within legal bounds before pulling the trigger. I called a lawyer friend of mine from college and explained the entire ordeal and asked his legal opinion. He was pretty determined as long as statements made were truthful first-hand accounts, then reporting administrative violations served ethical civic duty. Well, that was my need for the green light. Formulating the complaint. Guys, I began handwriting... These exhaustive letters addressed to the head building official citing every infraction, conflict of interest, and negative experience resulting from the deceptive rental listing of an uninhabitable property. I made sure it encompassed safety concerns, electrical hazards, building integrity issues, and of course pest risk, observed as grounds for urgent action. Dates, images, statues, and signatures finished off ten pages ready for submission requesting condemnation and a review of it. So, satisfied with my petition draft, I decided to call up former colleagues at Town Hall to give them a heads up regarding the complaint landing on their desk. So Monday morning, I caught up with a senior inspector, Frank, who reviewed my statements with dismay. Oh, wish I could say I'm surprised, Alec, but sadly it sounds pretty typical around here. Email me the documents and rest assured I'll get that place shut down. <laughs> For repairs very, very quickly. I just went ahead to thank him sincerely. For the support despite our rocky work past. Well, submitting the complaint. Early Monday, I walked into the familiar marble-floored government building clutching my letter and memory stick of evidence. The receptionist's eyes popped wide seeing my return. Whispers filled the office and several people peered around the corner, shocked at my presence. I ignored them and marched straight to the building clerk station, submitting the exhaustive files I prepared. Handing it over felt like slow motion. Seeing words turn to action was tremendously gratifying and they promised an investigation within five business days, so now... I guess you could say it's just time to wait. Update number three. Five anxious days passed before I got the call I've been anticipating. It was Frank delivering some very great news. They had gone to inspect the property and found enough broken regulations to immediately deem the entire structure uninhabitable. My report triggered such an urgency that the top-level building official himself did a walkthrough and initiated emergency red-tagging procedures right there on the spot. Well, what red-tagging is? I listened intently as Frank went ahead to explain the process that was now unfolding. So, right as we rolled up, the chief could see exterior hazards you documented. We knocked on doors to get inside units and found much, much worse... You know, just like you said, 
Loose wire, black mold in the walls, decaying stair sets. It was bad. By the time we finished assessing upstairs, the chief made the call to red tag the place before someone got hurt. It's completely shut down until significant repairs met compliance. COA's financial burden, right? When I asked about the next step, Frank told me the chiefs issued stacks of violation citations to both the condominium association and individual owners. Turns out, several units were illegally split into doubles and triples, causing overcrowding and extra wear. The association looked the other way for years, evidently, as more residents meant more HOA dues. Well, guess what? Now Karen and her fellow board members had to explain $50,000 in hard construction cost, plus another fifteen grand in city fines to already angry owners. Not to mention the expensive structural architect plans to legally reinstate two units back to singles. Major unexpected special assessment bills are on the way. As we ended our call. Frank overhandedly mentioned I stirred things up based on the chatter around the department water cooler. Half the community is in outrage over being abruptly displaced from their homes, you know. You dropped a bomb with your complaint that created a temporary housing crisis here. Karen's getting eviscerated for neglect and mismanagement of funds, and I heard there might even be a formal investigation into financials given rumors of self-dealing. So yeah, man, you enacted some justice, Alex. Over the next few weeks, more details surfaced about infighting within the condo association board, given the extreme expenses and assessments. Several members even accused Karen of mishandling the finances for personal gain over the years. I even heard she siphoned money to give the mysterious black truck guy contracts for undefined maintenance work. Speculation around town suggested they had a secret affair going on. Ew. Regardless of the dramatic rumors, Karen was ultimately removed as president and barred from seeking an elected position again. The plot for revenge has gone even better than expected. I'll wrap up the final update and reflection next. Update number four. Over the next year, I followed updates on the condo, complex, lengthy repair process, and financial burdens through my connection still with the town. The significant structural issues, compound by surmounting penalties and legal fees, resulted in multiple units foreclosing when owners could not afford their share. Last I heard, the place was bought out by a developer who fully gutted the renovated property into a high-end hotel. Karen became somewhat of a pariah, after being publicly blamed for neglecting building issues over her decades of mismanaging the condo association. The formal investigation until financial fraud resulted in felony charges, given substantial evidence she funneled repair funds into personal spending. Her reputation was left in shambles, along with her career prospects. In the months that followed, I received plenty of grateful calls from previous owners and tenants, Regarding the deplorable situation I uncovered, <laughs> they had complained unsuccessfully themselves for years with no recourse until my official filings triggered the civic action. I'd given them a voice and path to restitution that they deserved. Even the wrathful owner himself reached out almost a year later, offering a sincere apology. He acknowledged the letting emotions and the manipulative Karen blind him initially, my documentation helped him fight to regain some rental income loss through insurance claims, too. As time passed, I felt an overwhelming sense of closure from the entire awful ordeal. I stood up against deceit and corruption when no one else could or would. The personal satisfaction in forcing justice legally and safely was incredibly rewarding. I broke the seedy system. In the end, reflecting on my filings, catastrophic impact, I questioned whether the punishment fit the violations. Did dozens of average residents deserve homelessness for their HOA board's negligence? Was jeopardizing community stability too drastic just to right personal wrongs? I still grapple with striking that ethical balance during my brief glory days as a vigilante whistleblower. Regardless, safety regulations ultimately improved as a result, so no one would unknowingly risk danger again. The town adapted by creating temporary housing vouchers to 
for any future displaced renters. I guess some universal good arose despite the extensive damage. Nobody dares dismiss a citizen complaint moving forward either. And that sums up this epically escalating bad rental story with its satisfactory revenge conclusion. Let me know your thoughts or if you have any other questions. I do appreciate you following my unfolding drama. So guys, I do want to check out one of these comments. It was pretty heated. A lot of people were arguing about it, didn't agree with it. Some people did. Let me know what you think in our comment section down below. Here's what the comment said. I know, I'm playing the devil's advocate here, since many comments praise your extreme actions. Did you give the owner or Karen any warning of your plans beforehand or a chance to voluntarily refund your stay and make amends? Going from a simple personal dispute directly to blowing up their lives forever via home condemnation seems a bit drastic and cruel, don't you think? You acted as judge, jury, and executioner, which violates ethics in my opinion, even if the intentions were for the greater good. Perhaps a warning letter about complaints would have allowed, I don't know, them to remedy the issues before disabling the whole complex. You skipped that reasonable first step since emotions were high. Something to consider about the ethics of revenge through administrative channels. Nonetheless, glad the hazardous conditions were ultimately corrected, which protects future tourists. Alright guys, so I do want to know what you think about that one. Drop it down below. My name's Mr. Redito. I narrate stories like this every day. This is my revenge channel, where almost every story has something to do with revenge. Once again, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.